a question for now this evening? Yeah, I've got some <coughs> complaints myself about the shape the first street's in. About the, I mean, the dip I, especially. Yeah, the dip. The dip, the dip on the uh, east-west east side there is, uh, <coughs> well, I'm talking about back by Monroe, there's a pothole that's developed there. Yeah. Well. Need some kind of temporary patch in there. Yeah, we can, we can get a weed burner out or something and try and get some mad in there. So. Need some, because I'm about tired of it. Is there any other place on there? All the pot, all the manholes. I mean, yeah. Well, Bob, Bobby and we talked about it. We're going to raise those up. Yeah, I'd buy the extension if that's. No, we got we got the money now. To, after the first year, we, we can do it. So, uh, hopefully, have a better weather day. Yes, we can get that. Done. Any more questions for Mel this evening? Thank you, Mel. Mm -hmm. Fire Department, Leonard. Yeah, I'd like to ask what you guys' opinion would be to open up the burn field you know, again. A lot of people's got a luke of small limbs in their yard. They got leaves from all this down stuff. And I've had a lot of calls from citizens that would like to, you know, be able to go ahead and burn these small limbs and, and kind of do some cleanup. I just wonder how you all felt about it. We'd have to regulate it with the wind conditions and that, you know, but I think it'd just save a lot of problems if we'd let them, you know, do just a little bit of burning. You know, open it up for a while, you know, after you know, the snow is over. It'd be better if it snows on. <laughs> well, yeah, around the area, but I mean, a lot of people's got, you know, just boot these little small lambs in their yard and, and they want to rake up, clean up, and it might be a lot of headaches for spring cleanup, too, you know. Well, I'm in favor of it. That's what needs to be done. Long they call in. Yeah, we just have to have them call in and then we'll regulate it by the wind. You know, if there's a lot of wind, we just say, no, you can't burn that long unless the wind's under a certain so many mile an hour, you know. That way there's less problems and, and watch the you know fronts come in because I don't want to burn if there's a you know cold front coming in because the wind will change on you three or four times. Okay. We have to do a mirror proclamation plan again. Usually. We'll prove that next meeting, Larry. Okay. Well, you have to print out the paper once. Or? There's, well, sh we have to draw it out, and you guys have to approve the proclamation, and then it'll be published, published then. <clears throat> okay, we'll write right time. Mine. How long? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How long? Time so she'll know. Oh. Just a couple weeks? Yeah, I think a couple weeks. They can't get it done. You know, depending on the weather, if we get a lot more storms in, we may have to extend it. I'm saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Say, we do a, a spring open burn usually like in April, April, so we could just do it earlier this year. Well, and you'll still have in the spring, too. You know, we do spring clean. Yeah. I was going to say that we're right up against each other. Yeah, we can do it, open it up. But yeah, until spring cleaning center. We could do that. Why don't you just let it through until the regular time to close? I just determine they have to buy a permit, you know, maybe get everything kind of cleaned up for him. Mel brought to my attention, he was, we were discussing these propane tanks, you know, people wanting to put in town. And I thought the situation over quite a bit. I was surprised the other person wasn't here that was here last time, you know, said they had a propane tank for two years, you know, and, and uh, I didn't know it. I don't know, Mel, did you know they had Well, how this all came about, we had talked about it before, you know, at council and the really no action was taken on it and had a person come in that had had a, a propane tank and had had it for a couple of years and you know we really weren't aware of it or anything and there, we really don't have any regulations that require them to even let us know but uh, they had switched companies with who they were hauling propane and the other this new company wanted a letter from the city stating that you know we were giving them permission I said well we have no policy on it so I'm you know can't give you anything in writing one way or the other so I called Leonard and so I, I it's come up before and I said well uh, if you want to talk about it fine if, if whatever you want to do and I said just you know it's kind of Leonard's deal on that so whatever he wants to well I thought this over you know quite a bit and I really don't want to say that this flat can't do it but I think we need to set up something 
where it has to be the play situation has to be looked at and decide whether you know there's a you know a safe you know setting for it you know and check the environment all out you know because I don't want everybody putting in propane tanks but there's places outside you know around you know, on the outsides and edge of town and and places you know that I think we could use consideration on you know if they did want a propane tank. But I think it needs you need to set up something where it has to be approved before it can be done. Probably the site is a hazard and we won't do it. I mean, I think aren't there industry standards saying they have to be so many feet away from yeah, the residents? Yeah, residents, yeah. You know, and, and I, you know, and if you would expand that probably in town, because uh, you get some places in town where the houses are pretty close together, it would be pretty hard to have a propane yeah. tank in a, in a yard. They, could, they couldn't have to, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt anybody, but there's so many uh, regulations on putting a propane tank in anymore that, you know, the propane companies, they won't even touch it if, if it's not up to specs with them. So I think there's, you know, the doors open to be regulated, you know, by them more than anybody, you know, because they, if they don't meet standard codes and everything, they'll just absolutely will not set your tank because the liabilities are too great on it. <clears throat> That I agree with you totally, and I think the propane industry is more strict than the natural gas industry by a long ways. I mean, as far as safety, and I know they have to be checked. You have to have a line test and a tank test at least once a year. So they won't, they won't even set you a tank if you don't have yeah. all this done. you got to pay to have all this done. So I think that would pretty much <coughs> regulate a lot of it to what any ordinance we could bring in effect. Are we talking commercial? No, just residential? citizens around, residential and commercial. Either. Either. Okay. Because the, I, I'm, the liabilities is tremendous, and their insurance they have to carry to do this is just above and beyond because there's just too many liabilities. So they won't hardly put you at one in if, if it don't meet all standards to the T. Yeah, I'm gonna, I think that that's what I would do. <coughs> if it won't meet the LP standards for the country or the city, that needs to be the guidelines. Because I think I think the you know the LP company would notify us the city you know if somebody wanted to put one in that didn't meet code you know because they they won't even fill it or they won't even set a tank so I think it's pretty much you know their baby because they're the ones liable for it over us you know. Hmm. Yeah, I think it should be like that too. Yeah. Who's going? But, I mean, we can look at the situation of where somebody wanted to do, they ought to call, contact the city, too. You know, some of them would like to have a propane tank, and we could, you know, I could look over the situation, too, you know, before the, you know, the propane company or whoever comes down there because, you know, just see, and just say yay or nay, you know, before they even you know. You or Mel, the biggest thing is having it set off the alley right away. Right. Well, it's not, we wouldn't allow anybody to put anything on the right away, but, you know, my main concern is, you know, if Leonard's satisfied with the safety and, and if the, the regulations of the propane industry, you know, if, if they say it's okay <coughs> and, and if you guys want to allow it, that's, that's what we ought to go by. But, you know, just, you need something in, in place so when someone comes in here and says, I want one, and then someone, you know, they, they want to know it's okay, and I think if this is what the policy is going to be, that's what we'll go by. Whatever you want to do. Do you think we ought to have some written thing that's more objective? You know, than I tell you, the cost of propane. Look at it because the cost of propane. A lot of people are not going to put it in because the propane is very expensive right now. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's to keep it. That's a, both for all the There's a national <laughs> standard for, for <laughs> propane. It's right all up. national. What a headache! It's a national thing. And, so he should be the judge of whether they if, have the If the supplier doesn't want to supply propane, then he needs to find he somebody else if he wants propane. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that he needs to Mel and Leonard have pretty good common sense. So they can keep it under the Thank you. Well, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to be mainly concerned about placement along the right of ways and utilities, and Leonard is for us to take care as far as the fire safety and, and we will you know, make sure the, that everything's being put in according to the standards set by the propane industry. And that's what you want to allow. That's what we want. 
I mean, if you go around town and see somebody's just got a propane bottle stuck out there and they don't have the regulators right and all that, you know, just heating it out, Billy, you know, we might kind of come down on them a little bit on that, you know. Was there, was there any specific concerns with the citizens you talked to, or was it just general patrol issues as far as being out? No, they want some protection of some type on, on duty from 2 o'clock until 6 o'clock. They want to see a car. Yeah. Like they want could, to see something. You could, you could easily back off from 9 o'clock in the morning all the way down to about 2 or 2.30. Two Whenever the kids get out of school, you have pretty good citizens traffic through that time. The kids are all in school. Then when they get back out of school, if somebody needs to come back on duty, and, and the sheriff's department's always got people in town for helping with the tickets. Work your schedule, leave your gap there for rest, and then come on duty when we're all home. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it well, yeah, I mean, but we, you know, as far as lunch hour goes, we got an open lunch hour for the high school too, so we got to be there. That's that's our biggest biggest problem right there is, is the lunch hour as far as our, you know being around the school. Um, and we, we think that's pretty important to be there before school, and, you know, during lunch and after. Because the minute we're not there, then people are driving like they're not supposed to, and, and somebody's going to get ran over her because we have a lot of kids walk to and from school. Um, and that would be one thing that you wouldn't want to print the paper. No cop on duty from <laughs> 9 to 2. <coughs> we don't need to advertise that. Why don't we know that we advertise that? Well, I'm planning on doing all my traveling. So I see me anyway. Well, also, we need to, we need well, to figure something out. We will really that be to, easier yeah. to do once you get out of school and sunny back? Well, of course, yeah. yeah once you guys, <laughs> <laughs> guys are kind of stretched about as far I as mean, you I'm mean. sure if you guys saw our, saw our overtime hours, you'd probably flip your lids. But, yeah. yeah. I agree with Adam on that deal. They need to be on there at noon because those kids get a little carried away up and down these streets. Okay. And these little kids are crossing the streets, so. I know what, brother, not see a cop on duty from Sunday at like 10 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the afternoon because there ain't nothing going on. There ain't no, no, three cars in the whole city of town. Yeah, sure. Well, it's, I mean, it's, you know, we, we can do our best, but, but the problem, I mean, one of the problems is living in a small town, as soon as people figure out that you're not on duty from 10 o'clock Sunday morning until 3, then that's when they're going to go do their messing around. So, I don't, you know. I don't think there's going to be a big problem with kids on Sunday afternoon. Oh, it's not just kids. I mean, it's, it's everything. <laughs> it would be a whole lot easier to do something at night between 2 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock sure. in the morning. It will be Sunday afternoon because there's going to be some people around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we I think we're, we need to look at some of this citizen help. Tom, you got any comment on that? Yeah. I, I think a citizen patrol. Kevin, Becky? Yes. I think some kind of a development of a citizen patrol yeah. would benefit us. Some. What do you mean by, I mean, what? <clears throat> oh, just say someone undercover. Someone, that, someone that's up, not doing nothing from 3 o'clock till 6 o'clock and just have their nose stuck out the window worried if our cops are out doing anything. If they're not, then they're going to complain. So why don't they go get in their vehicle and ride around and check out things? Some people in our radio desk. So is this going to be a, a volunteer <laughs> kind of thing? Paid? Well, that's what yeah. I think we need to look into. I mean, as far as something like that is, there's, there's a lot of liabilities that have to be looked at because if somebody decides that they're all of a sudden think that they're a cop and that they're going to go run somebody down in their own vehicle. Well, no, I'm not saying that. I don't think they need that kind of authority, but, I mean... They well, but they, they, a lot of times they'll take that upon themselves, is what, is what, I, what I would be concerned about. That's something that, that's something that needs to be looked at, I think, and there's a lot of details that would have to be worked out that right. probably couldn't be worked out here this evening. We might need a special workshop on it if we're serious about it. Well, yeah, I mean, if you guys are sure, we'd be more than willing to work with, I think, with whatever you guys want to do. The best thing to do, if you're thinking about that, let the chief come together with some kind of plan. And right. Develop. Sure. I'd rather you guys not try to come Right, up. exactly. We're going to have to look at it a little better. There's going to be some citizens take matters in their own hands. Well, I understand that. I'm just yeah. saying. They're tired of not having enough protection. Well, with all the break ins that we're having around the yeah. county, it's getting out of control. and. When they, when they know one cop's on duty and he's up by the North Park and 
they got someone watching the cop and they can go ahead and do whatever they have to do, it doesn't take long. You're going to have exceptions to every rule. That's right. I think it's the council's responsibility to, to deal with that. Whatever needs to be dealt with, whether we let Sonny give us some kind of input or, or I mean, I think it's our, we can't tell the police department, oh, you got to do this and this and this because right. we don't have enough manpower. That's right. So it's up to us to figure out a way to do it, I think, if that's what we want to do. Well, you could have something like a neighborhood watch thing where, what? You know, yeah. people call 911. Sure. I, maybe that's more. Maybe that's more of what you should call it than a citizen's patrol. Yeah, right. I think so. And the only thing the neighborhood watch is not gonna. They're not gonna have nobody out <coughs> turning the key out. Well, part of the neighborhood watch might, might entail driving around. I mean, I take my turn along with everybody else. If I had to do that, if that's what it comes to. Well, you have to, I mean, it's, those are all excellent ideas, but as far as neighborhood watch, stuff like that, what people are going to have to understand is if they see a crime happen, or for it to be prosecuted, they, they have to testify. I mean, we've had problems in the past where people want to report something, and when it comes to signing on the bottom line, they won't do it. And there's only, there's only so far you can go with anonymous reports. I mean, it, it works. If, if there's enough evidence of the crime that we can pursue it and then actually get a suspect and, and do something like that, it works. But. Well, if somebody's on like that, you need to have an officer on call or the sheriff's officer on right. call yeah, exactly. that can follow up and do the actual, you know, you don't, exactly. want, that, you don't yes. want that person going out and trying to make the citizens arrest. <coughs> I agree totally. Being a vigilante and trying to, you know, <laughs> if they see something, they should call 911 and report it. And let the police take care of it. I agree. Totally. <coughs> I agree totally. We don't have the resources to have people do that. No, but you could get volunteers to be on watch at certain times. When, you, know. you might just run an article in the paper and put a number down. You know, for people who are suspicious of something going on, give them a number to call. We've done that before, Leonard. We've had all, I don't know if we still have it or not. Yeah, they print they print the number in the paper still, but the hotline hasn't been hooked up for two years. Yeah, <laughs> I wondered about that. We did that call that. Okay, I called that once. Did you get anything? Yeah, nine one one's pretty. I think we ended up having like five calls in a whole year. It yeah, it wasn't very. It yeah. was a deal that we did to Try. kind of it, a little bit less intense than nine one one, but yeah, so I thought nine one one was for life. Because some people. Now, if you see a crime being committed, you call 911. That's exactly right. That's right. Well, that's that's the, what it's there for. The main issue we had with the hot rides, we would have people call, yeah, and, and they no. would say, well, I saw a teenager smoking. Well, there's a lot of teenagers, and you know, we don't, there, there wasn't, you couldn't put caller ID on it because if they want to remain anonymous. So, and then people would ask why we weren't doing anything about it, but we didn't have any more information than I saw a teenager smoking lunch today. I think it's something we need to look at. We need to have a workshop on it. Sonny, whenever he's Sonny, he shouldn't be back. I mean, he was yeah. Yeah. And if and if it, if it's something we can, you know, we could get the whole police department together. I right. mean, as soon as Nick gets back and, and we get full staff together, that's something you guys want to do. We can, you know, we can all sit down together and, and put our heads together and do whatever we want to do. Maybe check check see so if there's some other programs, yeah, that are already formulated for that. Yeah, you've got a new program now as far as the Corporation Commission. It's called Highway Watch. I went to a meeting. First Commission meeting well, last week sometime when they introduced this, and I don't know that much about it. It's called Highway Watch. Have you guys heard anything about that? How is uh, Simon? He's, he's getting along. Yeah, he's a lean guy. He, was, he, went, he had to go to the speaker for a few days for, I think, the Association of Chiefs Police meeting, something like that. He didn't get around better now? Yeah, he still can't get around great, but he's, he's yeah. can get around enough to, to manage. Um, I just want to make a comment, Adam. It just I don't want people that are listening or will be reading the paper to get the impression that we don't have any patrol at that time of night, because we have always given Sunny and the department their own. I mean, to use their own judgment as to when they will and won't set schedules. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, yeah, it would be a false well, and, and that's, that's one thing. to say we don't. That is one thing we try to do when we're fully staffed because we are, you know, our shifts work sure. is 4 to 4, 4 a.m. to 4 p.m., 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. 
And, and you know, there's, there's often times where we won't, usually we, the, our main hours are usually from 6 to 2 on the, on the evening shift. You know, there's times that we'll come out at 7 or 8 and stay out until 3 or 4. You know, and then whoever's working day shift will we'll sometimes try to come out early. So it's... <coughs>
anytime you absorb that much in blue cross and blue shields, that's a pretty good race. Right. Our rate last year went down. Didn't yeah, it? we actually went down this last year. Yeah, I mean, health care, cost of health care is just huge. Well, I think, from what I've seen, it looks to me like everybody's made, got pretty good paychecks. But I would be against any kind of a race. Well, that's, I mean, I guess that's why I'm saying if, if someone actually didn't get the step increase or whatever, I mean, I guess I could see giving them something for cost of living. But if they're all making that, you know, step, well, then I think that's probably ample. Probably the, the best thing to do would be to adjust the pay range. Because if somebody's at the top of the range, they can't get a step. And if money isn't worth as much, you can make the top of the range higher so they're eligible to get one if they deserve it. Do we have somebody that is? I don't know where everybody is. We have is. a few that are very close on where they basically get a 10 cent raise or something like that. And as you get closer to it, aren't the step raises smaller? Yeah. Sure. It really doesn't matter to me. I won't go to Twitter for anybody who wants to. Be. <laughs> get me honest to the employees. <laughs> spend some money four or five years ago on a pay plan. So yeah. You know, like one five, maybe so. <coughs> I actually think I... I wonder what... It's been a while back. Yeah, it's, I think it was maybe O2. It was a while. Then my thoughts were we ain't got money to fix a manhole on First Street, then why should we be getting money? Is there any more discussion? Is there any more? 